told me. You know that I find a lot of things nowadays to be completely odd, strange, weird, and oftentimes ridiculous. And in the world of politics, this is true. But you all, this is even strange for me. You have the current governor of the state of Florida in a tit for tat dispute about what I really don't know with Walt Disney. Have you all heard about this? Apparently the governor, Ron DeSantis of Florida, is tussling with Disney. And I know you all are going to tell me it's about the culture war and the LGBTQIA community and all of that. And I hear you all. That's one aspect. But here's why I really don't understand this. We know that people generally don't care about anything besides money. I hate to break that news to you all, but that's true. People care about money. And if Disney wasn't paying their bills, or the state wanted to shake them down a little bit more, they could have done that in private had that discussion not out in the open for the public to see. So I'm thinking if this is a shakedown operation by the state of Florida to Disney, they've gone about it all the wrong way. So it can't be that either because you wouldn't do something that sloppy in the public. That happens behind closed doors. And then I'm like, this is an individual who's very strongly rumored to be running for president in 2024. So I'm like, okay, he's taking this culture war crusade nationally. Because it plays well in the state of Florida, electorally, at least for him, in 2020. And in this last election, it played really well. So I get that, you all. But right now, I don't know if you all have noticed this, but we certainly have. A lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people are on edge. And... They don't want to hear about Minnie Mouse having a girlfriend. They might disagree with that. But they're trying to figure out a way to pay their light bills. So if Minnie Mouse has a girlfriend, it's news, but it's not the most important news. And you're this company has been a very lucrative investment for the state of Florida. You know, businesses don't always become lucrative investments for the state that they operate in. There's a lot of businesses that close up within three months, you all. Six months, they're out of business. So the state is not getting any tax revenue because they're gone. Disney has been in Florida for quite some time. They have a special district 
where they pay a substantial amount of money to the state of Florida. Somebody told me it was $1.1 billion they paid in state taxes last year. $1.1 billion. That's what a B you are. A billion. In state taxes to Florida. Now, I don't have to be Einstein or rocket science to know. If somebody pays me $1 billion, I'm going to be nice and hospitable to them. I'm not going to go out of my way to insult them. To maybe do something detrimental to their business. Because then I'm going to be biting the hand that feeds me. Look, if Disney starts doing bad as a company, that means Florida is going to start doing bad as a state. They give you a lot of money to operate their business there. They have their own fire department, their own trash collectors. They run their own little city so much or so. And Florida is poking at that veil. Now here's where it really gets crazy for the governor. This week, he goes and pals around with the big wigs on Capitol Hill in D.C. And you all, this is how you can tell people don't like him in his own party. The day he's there in D.C. to talk with them, his opponent in the primary, you know, the lunatic from mar a he gets endorsed by his own Floridian Congress members. So you go to D.C. You have no endorsements lined up. You're fighting a war with Disney about what no one really knows. And then you all, they just had a severe flooding in Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale. Now, this is a relatively blue area. But still, you all, it's a sh chance to show leadership. You have a storm. You're supposed to be present in the state when something bad happens. Remember, you're the chief executive of the entire state. When something severe happens, you're supposed to work around your schedule. Tell the people who are advising you politically, hey, we're going to have to do this a different day. I got to be in my state. Something bad has happened to my people. I got to go take care of them. That shows leadership. To go to D.C. after a storm that you haven't visited your people from. And you have nothing lined up. Now Floridians are like, wait a minute. We're happy that our governor is being talked about to be president. But we're struggling now. And you're in D.C. You didn't get any endorsements. Do you all know how bad it is in Florida right now? It's horrible. A lot of people want to leave Fort Lauderdale and Miami, but they're stranded. Literally. There are lines at the gas stations in Fort Lauderdale and Miami right now that are two and three hours long just to get to the bump. And you all, it's so bad 
that the senator had to come out and say this. He said, look, the storm happened Sunday. It's been four days. The senator said, I can understand when this first happened, the gas shortages. But it's been four days and the lines are still two, three, four hours long. The senator said, what's going on here? We need an explanation from our governor. And he's nowhere to be found. He's in D.C. talking about fighting wolf. I'm beginning to think, you all, he's got some advisors who are more like traders than advisors. I'm beginning to think, potentially, certain advisors on his campaign are maybe supporters of the lunatic from Mar-a-Lago. It has to be sabotage, you all. Why would you not reschedule an event where you don't have any endorsements lined up? Your advisors are supposed to have that done for you. They're like, you go to D.C., you're going to talk and give these fancy speeches, and then after the speech, you're going to get three endorsements. We'll have it all lined up for you. And you're like, okay, sounds good. Let me go. But then you hear the news about the severe flooding in Fort Lauderdale, and you tell your advisors, look, can we reschedule? The people who are going to endorse me, can we do it another time? I got to go take care of the citizens in Florida. A good advisor is going to say, absolutely, we'll make some phone calls, we'll make it happen. The DNDC, you get zilch, zero endorsements. Your opponent gets three on the day you're supposed to get at least one. And then your residents are sitting in a line for four hours to get gas in Miami. You all know how big Miami is. They said there's no gas in Miami. Can you imagine that? No gas for the past four days in Miami. You know the crime is through the roof in Florida right now. I don't care what anybody says. Crime is up right now. That's why you're seeing a lot of people leave the state. They're trying to get to a neighboring state. Four days with no gas. And the governor hasn't said a damn word about this. He's talking about Disney. Now, here's where it's complete and utter political malpractice, what he's doing. If I'm Disney, I'm like, okay, you want to play hardball. You've established this board of five people you've appointed. We didn't get any say-so in this selection of people. At least maybe two from Disney, three from you. And the board recently votes unanimously to seize things that don't belong to the state of Florida from Disney. Now, the way I'm telling you, this is how Disney is looking at this. Disney is looking at this as you've upped the ante. Now you're coming to really try to shake us down. Now, Disney, I believe, turns 100 this year in October the 16th. You've got a company that's been around for a century, nearly, in a couple of months, a century. 
and you're trying to shake them down publicly and embarrass them. And all the while the residents of where Disney operates, they get so many perks for having Disney operate near their community. And they're getting nervous because now that you poke Disney, you know the company is going to retaliate. So, whilst I think the governor of Florida is great at political theatrics and rhetoric, He's absolutely a nightmare at governance. And you have to be able to smoothly do both. You have to be able to govern and do the politics. And it just seems to me that he's a one trick pony, you all. He can only do the political rhetoric. But the governing it's going to cause dire despair for the residents of Florida. It already is. I guarantee you, he just got reelected by a landslide. I guarantee you, if the election were held today, he would probably lose in a landslide. That's how quickly the narrative can change. Look. Let me tell you what I believe Disney could potentially do to respond. We're talking business now. And business and politics, while there's a lot of similarities, one cares only about making profit. The other cares about making profit and status. Companies don't give a fuck about titles and statuses. They want to make money. And if Disney feels like they can't make money in the environment that the governor is setting up for them, they're going to take their business elsewhere, you all. Look. Let me tell you how cutthroat this really is. And I'm only speculating on this because I don't know for a fact. But I got a brain and I know how to use that. If I'm a governor in, say, the state of Michigan. And I'm sitting back and I'm watching this. I'm watching the governor of Florida get into these arguments really about Dootley Squad concerning Disney, the company. I'm probably going to put a call out to talk with maybe a representative of the CEO, Bob Iger, I believe. I'm going to say I'm the governor of Michigan. I'd like to have a sit-down conversation over tea with your CEO when he's not busy. Could you pencil me in? Because these people be really busy, you all. I'm telling you. And they might get back to her and say, you know, Bob can't see you for like three months. He's booked. But we told him you were calling about something important. And Bob wants to meet with you, Governor, next week in Michigan. Are you available at this time and this day? And the governor's like, absolutely. Look, 
I know she's a married woman. Did you all hear me? I said they paid the state of Florida 1.1 billion last year in taxes. I'm just saying. I had to repeat that. Because some of you all might not get it until you actually get it. Now, I'm the governor of Michigan, and I'm going to say, look, you're in Florida. You have beautiful and lovely weather all year round. But the current government is making it hard for you to do business there. Have you given it any thought about possibly relocating any aspects of your business or maybe your entire structure? We in the great state of Michigan would love to have you come to our state. You're welcome to tour our state. We'll give you tax incentives to bring your people here. We'll give you a special district. We'll give you whatever you want. Can you pay us $1.1 billion like you paid Florida? Actually, no. We'll let you pay us $800 million. You're paying them $1.1 billion and they're not grateful. You pay us $800 million and you can have whatever you want. Do you think the governor in Michigan is not trying to woo Disney to her state? Are you crazy? See, you all don't know these things, but we do. And that's why I said this is political malpractice at the highest level. This is biting the hand that feeds you, literally. You all sometimes say that and the example is not sufficient or evident. But this is literally biting the hand that feeds Florida. And Celebration Florida, where Disney is located. The residents are worried to death. They're not in support of what the governor is doing. And you know it's bad when the lunatic from mar a says, I don't even know why my governor is fighting with Disney. Because he's all about money too. And Ron DeSantis, the governor, is saying the hell with the money. I'm trying to be president. And everybody is like, you're never going to be president if Disney relocates from your state to another state. That's like it. You're out of here. Adios. And I'm telling you all, that's potential reality at this point. Disney could relocate to another state. You think if I'm not the governor of California, I'm not trying to have a sit down with Disney at this point? Every governor in America is probably calling Disney trying to get them to relocate to their state. If I'm the governor in Illinois, I'm calling. Who doesn't want $1.1 billion? When Disney made it public how much they paid in state taxes, I guarantee you, everyone and their mother was on the phone to Disney. You all, I'm not a 
betting out. I don't make wagers or bets. But I'm going to go out of my way this time to tell you only this. I would be shocked and surprised if the state of Florida continues to escalate this. That Disney doesn't just pack up his bags and say, Adios, amigos. I would not be shocked and surprised to hear that. And they might do it, you all, on a very symbolic and significant day for them. You know, let's be fair here. Disney as a company was having severe issues and problems. There was this internal struggle and debate between whether to reimagine the company or not. And what this did, what this numbskull-like political stunt did was unify the company. Because now it looks like it's Disney versus the state of Florida. So sometimes when you have problems internally and someone externally attacks you, you rally the troops. And that's what this did because the people who work at Disney, whether they agree or disagree with company direction, they're going to be loyal to their company. They get paid. And this looks like an attack against the company. Do you think if I'm a CEO who just came back, I'm not going to rally the troops and say, look here. Florida is trying to shake us down. They can say all this other bullshit in the public. This is a shakedown. This is how I'm going to frame it to my people. And we don't go for shakedowns at Disney. So first make it public that we paid this bitch $1.1 billion and he's ungrateful. Yeah, Disney probably put that out. You don't ever hear about what companies pay the states. You all, I've been doing this for a while. I've never heard a big, large Fortune 500 company announce publicly how much they pay in state taxes to any state ever. So Disney said, make it public how much we give that bitch. And then if the bitch is still ungrateful, oh, well, we might have to relocate some of our workforce. They made that public too. They said that that's an internal conversation ongoing. And then if that doesn't work, then you say, well, we're going to have to just pack up our bags and leave. They've made the environment so unhospitable and so unwelcoming. And we're going to go where we're more likely to be appreciated. Maybe we'll go to Michigan. We like the governor there. We think the state is doing wonderful work on environmental restoration projects. We like the state of California, too. It's warm in Southern California all the time. Maybe they'll go to New Mexico. You never know. They have free community college there. So they have a good base of workers to maybe pull and select from. You know the governor of New Mexico was on the phone too. The possibilities are 
endless at Disney. Yeah, that's what the CEO Bob Iger is probably saying to his people. I don't know why the governor of Florida decided to attack Disney. But you all, this is not going to end well for him or the state of Florida. It's just not. And you know who the residents are going to ultimately blame for this malfeasance? Their chief executive officer of the state, which is their governor. You lost us $1.1 billion, sir. Explain yourself. And there is no explanation. What, Minnie Mouse kissed a girl? Mouse? You think people want to hear about losing their jobs? Their home values plummeting? Because Minnie Mouse had a girlfriend? You all. This is America. Cash rules everything around me. I don't know who's advising the governor in Florida. Whoever it is, it's my belief that they're a traitor to him, his political potential. Because at this point, I couldn't see him getting elected to be a dog catcher if Disney leaves the state of Florida. You know how much news that's going to make. And watch, you're going to see it. They're going to show you the CEO with the governor initiative. I guarantee you, they're going to show you. I know how this works. These companies are ruthless. Politicians, they come and they go. Disney has been there for a hundred years, you all. They're going to say, you know, a hundred years. That's a long time. They're going to roll the B footage of Mickey Mouse in black and white. They're going to show you the kids running into the theme park. They're going to put you back in Andy Griffin time. A simpler time. And then they're going to show you the new Disney. The reimagined Disney. And they say, when you reimagine something, Sometimes it requires a reimagination of the scenery. Sometimes the grass is really greener on the other side. You know how green the grass is in Michigan? They're going to show you families crying after leaving Disney World. They're going to show you marriages. They're going to show you picnics. Oh, I know Disney. Disney is going to pour it on thick. And you know they're going to have an ally in this. You know, a lot of you all say Tinseltown, Hollywood, hates Disney. And this is true. Tinseltown does not like Walt Disney. I'm telling you, this is a fact. People don't want to talk about this, but it's a fact. But a lot of people in Tinseltown got their start at Disney. It's like your first job. You generally don't like your first job, but you remember. When you think back on it, you're like, you know, I was just starting off. And they gave me a shot. 
And even if you don't like somebody, the treatment, you're going to remember that they gave you the potential, the opportunity, the chance to make it big in Tinseltown. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Tinseltown, the big heavy hitters in Tinseltown, they're going to rally to Disney's defense. So not only is he going to be fighting Walt Disney, he's going to be fighting Tinseltown. Tinseltown has never teamed up with Walt Disney. You all, put this on your calendar. Remember I told it to you first. Tinseltown and Walt Disney are going to team up. Boy, I am telling you, I might even cry at the production that they put on. I might even cry. Oh, they're going to lay it on thick, as thick as it can be. I'm going to say this. The governor in Florida is way over his head. And he would do best to try to tiptoe as softly as possible back out of this one. But I just don't see it happen. He's going to stick with his culture war crusade. And Disney is going to eat his breakfast, his lunch, and his dinner. And even maybe a dessert. If Disney leaves the state of Florida, it's over for him. Especially his presidential aspirations. But it's over for him even being governor. You don't think the Republican legislator down there in the state would maybe impeach him over this? If Disney left and made a big announcement that they're leaving on their 100th anniversary and told you I'm going to Michigan I'm going to pay that 1.1 billion, 900 million, 800 million to Governor Gretchen Whitmer. You don't think those people in Florida would call him in to their chamber and say, hey, you cost us 1.1 billion. You got any way to replenish or replace that revenue, Governor? And if he says no, you don't think those people would impeach him? They say this is derelict of duty. You're the chief executive. You're supposed to bring money in. We're not supposed to lose money. And if we lose money, we're not supposed to lose $1.1 billion. That's why half of the Florida delegation, the Republican side, has endorsed the lunatic from Mar-a-Lago. They see the handwriting on the wall. They're not stupid. They're like, this guy is really in a tit-for-tat with Disney. They're like, they don't want any part of that. His old congressional seat, the Republican who holds that congressional seat endorsed the lunatic from Mar-a-Lago yesterday. They don't know what he's doing. Look, I'm not going to tell you all any lies. I don't even know what he's doing. 
It makes no sense. None whatsoever. That's why I said, this is crazy, you all. I had to come on and talk with you all about this. I've never seen anything like this. Because this shit happens in private. The state and the company, they do business in back rooms. You think Disney was always paying the state of Florida 1.1 billion? That figure is probably progressively gone up over the years that they've done business. You think Disney would tell you how much they pay the state of Florida if they weren't pissed off about what the state of Florida is doing to them? I'm telling you all, this is going to get ugly. Crime is up in Florida. You all who are there in Florida, please stay safe. Stay home. Lock your doors. That's why he did that gun thing, you all. He knows what's about to happen. It's going to be up. Look, it's already crazy in Florida. Do a Google search. Just this week of all the crime that's happened. You're going to see carjackings. Robberies. All the shit that they say happens in Chicago. It's happening all throughout the state of Florida right now. People are siphoning off gas in other people's cars. People are getting out of the car prostituting for $20 so they can fill up their tank. They're not showing you this because it's horrible what's going on. And he's not even in the state. He's in hiding somewhere. He ran to D.C. So the senator who's in charge of the federal government had to come and tell the citizenry I don't even know what he's doing. They said this is unacceptable. I'm telling you what the senator, a Republican senator, said about his own Republican governor. He said this is unacceptable. Four days and no gas and no explanation from the governor. He said, I can understand right after the storm. It makes sense. There would be shortages. But he said, we're on day four, and the lines have been two and three and four hours long. Now, this is a senator who's seen many, many different storms in the state of Florida. They did hurricanes and storms all the time. He's like, I've been through this rodeo before. And this is weird that in Miami there's no gas. He's like, what the hell is going on? You all. It's going to get dicey. Disney is going to make their move, I believe, very soon. I believe they're going to announce very soon, Disney, that they're going to relocate from the state of Florida to Michigan or California, New Mexico, Hell, maybe even Arizona.
the governor in Texas is probably calling you. You don't think, oh, you're like, he's a Republican. Bitch, I said 1.1 billion. He's on the phone too. You have no idea how this works. You all, this is, mystifies me, and I've been afraid. I have no clue what he's trying to do, the governor in Florida. But I'm telling you, if Disney leaves, you heard it here first. The Florida Republican supermajority will call him into their chambers and ask him for an explanation. If he does not give a credible explanation for how and why Disney decides to leave, they're going to impeach him. You mark my words on that. Because those residents in their congressional districts are going to demand that something be done. You all, we're in an inflationary crisis in this country. People can barely afford to eat. And you're looking at all of those people losing their income? And you think they care about Minnie Mouse with a girlfriend? They don't. At first I thought, well, maybe it's just political stunts. But now it's escalating to the point where, no, he's literally trying to shake down Disney. And think Disney won't shake him down. I'm telling you, that special district, It could be unconstitutional what the governor is currently doing because they have a special jurisdiction, a special district. Laws were crafted specifically for that district. And now the state of Florida is coming in saying that we can supplant the laws by appointing our own board. I don't necessarily know if they have jurisdiction to even do that legally. So Disney is definitely going to challenge the legality of this board. Because there's no guarantee that it's even legal. So that's one avenue that's going to be playing out. And then Disney might decide, well, if we're paying all of these legal fees now, and we're tied up in all of this litigation in Florida, it might just be best to close shop and do business elsewhere. You all don't know this, but a lot of businesses leave a state because of legal issues too. They're like, rather than pay all of these legal bills in this state, I'll change sceneries. Now, I know you're like, Disney down there, that's a huge operation. They've been down there for a long period of time. They love the community. So they have all of that going for them. But if you don't feel like the environment is hospitable to you doing business anymore, because you clearly have a rogue governor operating on some nonsensical principle, then you're going to have to do what's best for business. You all, 
I don't get this one at all. Tell me what you think. I don't get it. I said that this governor in Florida has disqualified himself even before he's announced. You all remember the blunder he made about Ukraine being part of Russian territory. You all remember that? He wrote that in a survey from Fox News host Tucker Carlson. This wasn't from Rachel Maddow of MSNBC or Jen Psaki. This was from Tucker Carlson. He wrote that in an essay. You all, you can do a simple Google search and know that Ukraine is a sovereign nation. The capital, Kiev, has never been a part of Russia. Even back during the USSR days. So for him to take all that time in a survey, this is what I said. I said, when you have a written survey and all your advisors are gathered in a room and they've done the research about the history of the countries, and you have time to review this yourself and you submit that type of blunder, you're not ready for prime time. That's what I told you all. Now you go to D.C. and you get zero endorsements on the same day. The doctor the dude that's been indicted gets three of your own Floridian congressional delegation members to endorse him. You're gone while there's people by the thousands waiting for hours to get gas. You're fighting Disney and Disney is about ready to leave pack up their bags and say adios amigo you all this is bad for him politically I think he let it go to his head that he won in a landslide so Floridians I blame you that election should have been more competitive but you know why it wasn't right Ron DeSantis had a hundred million dollar war chest. What credible Democrat wanted to run up against somebody with a hundred million dollars in their political war chest? No one. So they went and found a candidate who had been in office before, who was on a bus 90% of the time, during Zoom calls. That's why he won by 19 percentage points. As you all remember, we endorsed Nikki. And now she's over the Florida Democrat Party, right? Let me tell you something. Nikki is going to do a job on Ron. I told you all that a long time ago. I didn't tell you where she was going to do the job on it. She's running the Florida Dems, right? The Florida Dems are in disarray, right? They're doing such a horrible job. Hey, look, if Disney leaves the state of Florida, you don't think the Republicans are going to be in disarray? That's like a tsunami. That's an economical tsunami. In an inflationary crisis, to have a company 
that's paid you 1.1 billion decide to pack up their bags and leave. And if they go to Michigan and you see Governor Gretchen Whitmer smiling from ear to ear, you know she just got the bag. She just got the bag and the bag and the bag and the bag. And then some more bags. I'd be smiling ear to ear too. When they show you these photos of the CEO from Disney. Smiling with these other governors. The governor is liking what Bob is whispering in their ear. I could be wrong, you all. I could be absolutely incorrect. And you know what? I have the decency to come back on here. And if I'm wrong about my possible predictions, I'll have the decency early next year, January 1st, 2024 to come back on here and tell you you all I don't know what I was thinking I was wrong these companies they have a conscience and a soul they cared about the wonderful people of Celebration Florida so much that they endured a toxic environment to stay in Florida They're being bullied and pushed around, but they've just grown to accept it. I'll be happy to come back on and eat crow. Oh yeah, I'll say I'm wrong. I'm telling you all now what I would say. So I'm hedging. I'm saying I could be completely wrong. I'm hedging. They might stay in Florida. They might put up with that abuse. But somehow I don't see that being the case. You know, I think the governor in Florida who made that terrible television ad, remember the advertisement, his, one of his first political ads when he was running for governor? He said, in my household, we love Trump. And he showed his kids building a wall. We love Trump. We love Trump in this household. You know, prior to the debate, I think it's in August of this year, the Republican primary debate, prior to the debate, the lunatic from Mar-a-Lago, remember I said this here first too, the lunatic from Mar-a-Lago is going to play that advertisement as his opening in the debate. He's going to read out all of the text of that ad. And he's going to turn to the governor. Oh, look, I'm telling you, the lunatic learned one thing when he was in the Oval Office. How to play the game of politics. He's going to turn to the governor and say, did you or did you not say this about me? So why are you standing here? I did all of these things that you claim you care about and support. Why are we even having this fucking debate? You know he's crazy now, so he might say fucking on the stage. I'm just telling you, it's going to be crazy, the presidential race. I'm here for it, though. Or at least hopefully will be. And you know the governor is not going to have any type of answer. And then the lunatic is probably going to say, you know, you're in this dispute with Disney. Why the hell are you in this dispute with Disney? 
You know, Disney is talking about leaving. At this point, it might be public knowledge by August. End of the summer, they might make it public. We're thinking about leaving. He's going to say, Disney is thinking about leaving. Why the hell are you having this argument with Disney? You know how much jobs and revenue that brings to the state of Florida? Again, the governor is going to look like a deer in headlights. Not have a good answer. He's going to get crushed in that debate, you all. And you know, as ruthless as these Fortune 500 companies are, they might announce right before the debate, Walt Disney is thinking about relocating from Florida. Right before the debate. I mean, right before they go on stage. The CEO, Bob Iger, might have his people put out a press release saying just that. We're just thinking about relocating. We haven't made any final determination, but we're thinking about it. You have no idea how ruthless this shit can get. It's ruthless, baby. It's business. People don't give a fuck about you in business. You break a leg. Fuck you, pay me. Your house catches fire. Fuck you, pay me. Your wife has breast cancer. Fuck you, pay me. Your kid accident accidentally drowns at the YMCA pool. Fuck you, pay me. Do you all know what type of country you live in? This is the beast. It doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, Disney would put off that press release right before the debate. They'd be like, we're thinking about possibly relocating. And you know, the lunatic from mar largo would go and run and print it out, the whole entire press release, and embarrass the governor right to his face. Governor, I have a press release right off the presses. It's still warm. It says that Disney is thinking about relocating. Did you know anything about that? You know, your job is not to lose jobs. Your job is to gain jobs. Your job is not to lose money. I made the American government, and then he would go yada yada about his horrible four years. But you get my drift. And he's going to stand up there and look like a fool. Look, I don't know why anybody would want to go up against Disney. The Disney stars in Tinseltown. They got a lot of shit to say about Disney. But they're smart. They keep it to themselves. They'll bitch and complain amongst their friends. But if Disney comes calling and says, hey, look, we got this pesky governor that's getting on our nerves. We know you dislike some of the shit you went through here. But let's let bygones be bygones. Hey, I'm thinking about maybe doing some type of promo commercial to celebrate our 100th anniversary. And I was wondering if you and some other folks, some friends of yours in Tinseltown could get together and help us out with this. Here's what we're offering to pay you. What do you say? 
I know you didn't have a good experience the first time you were at Disney. But we're reimagining the company. And this is our 100th anniversary. I'm telling you how it goes in showbiz, baby. They're going to be like, when do you need us? Oh, can you come right away? We're going to start shooting and production and writing and all of that. We want to see what you guys can do. Come on over. Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hey, if I'm wrong, you all, and I'm just making this up, I'll let you know. I send my regards to the governor of Florida in advance. Boy, oh boy. I send my regards. You all, sit back and get some popcorn. And maybe some Canada Dry. And pour yourself a cup with some ice and sit back and watch this shit. You are about to see something you have never ever seen before. I'm telling you, they're going to put on a motion picture production that's going to have you crying. I'm telling you, you heard it here first. I'm not going to tell you or predict when it's going to happen, but it's going to be this year. Oh, it's going to be something to behold. There are going to be a lot of tears in Florida, you all. And it's because of your governor. You heard that here first. There's going to be a lot of tears. Sorrow, grief, loss. And I'm thinking to myself, all of this could have been prevented. If you really had a chief executive officer who cared about the citizens of Florida. Right now, you just have someone who's showboating and being targets. And that's a shame, man. That's a real shame. Well, you're probably going to have to throw a lot of these people that just blindly went along with this guy out of office to Because they should have known better. Some of those people in the Florida State Legislature that went along with this whole, oh, Ron DeSantis is a great governor scam. And that's what I call it. It's a scam. You know, he was able to scam so many people from the West Coast to move down to Florida. We're going to talk about this in a separate video. A lot of people from California in 2020, about four years ago, decided they had had enough of California. California, as they called it. 
And they sold their big old homes in California. And they relocated to Florida. And wouldn't you know, you all, I've been hearing about some odd things. You see, I don't always say everything. I hold back. Have you all been hearing about all of the out-of-state people on the roads in California with Florida license plates? Don't you find that a little bit odd? It's not travel season. Who can afford to take a vacation nowadays? What are so many Floridians doing back in California? Trying to cut and run, you're fleeing the state already. It's the freest state. Where you don't have any more books in the schools. You can't talk about what Rosa Parks did. You have to register as a journalist in order to report on the government. Oh, it sounds free to me. They said all of those people who relocated. The survey that came out recently said that they're sad, angry, upset, frustrated, crying. They want to move back. Oh, I regret to tell you that once you leave, you can't come back. No, I'm just lying. I'm kidding. But really, if you snooze, you lose. A lot of people left, but they never tell you about all the people who came to California. They're not going to get those houses back that they sold. They're stuck in Florida. That's why you see them in California on the road. They're scouting out looking for shit. We all know what they're looking for. It's nothing available to you. You decided to leave. Now you want to come back. We're going to do a whole video about that shit. I didn't tell it to you all then because I let you make your own decisions. But you young people, you listen to me. Don't ever do anything in haste. Because you might end up regretting it. This whole decision to go back and forth with Disney, this was done in political haste in my opinion. Because if he really had thought this out thoroughly and thoroughly, he would have said, no, long term this is not financially good for the state of Florida. But he didn't think this one out. And I'm telling you, your governor and your residents in Florida, you're going to pay the price. Dear, this is political malfeasance on a level I have not ever seen it before. Because this is not corruption, you all. This is just somebody who doesn't care that someone paid his state $1.1 billion in taxes. He's like, I guess he wants them to pay 1.5, I don't know. But Disney is like, you're not going to shake us down anymore. You know that's how Disney is framing this, as a shakedown. Internal, not external. You all are not hearing that. But internally, that's what they're hearing. This is a shakedown operation. 
That's why he appointed a second board. Yeah. Disney is being told internally, this is a shakedown. You heard that? Here first, too. That's some breaking news that your media is not going to tell you. That's the way I see it, too. You can come up with whatever stupid, nonsensical excuse you want. You don't take over an entire independent district because Minnie Mouse has a girlfriend. That's what they tell low IQ, low information people. High IQ, high information people know everything is about the Benjamins. Yeah, this is a shakedown. And somebody is going to really get shaken down. And it ain't going to be Disney. I guarantee you that. Only time, as they say, will tell. I could be wrong, you all. But I don't think I am.